a can of spray paint. How does a can of spray paint relate to laser scanning? I'll tell you, it directly relates to laser scanning, especially point cloud scanners from Faro. Hi, I'm Nick with Atlantic Laser Scanning. Today we're going to talk about range and accuracy with this type of point cloud scanner, how they relate and how they differ from what you might think. To start with our analogy with the paint can, the closer you are to the wall or the object that you're painting, the more coverage that you're going to get. You get a very solid paint coverage in the first part of that video on the wall and as you back that paint can up and spray you see that the droplets are spreading apart from the, the spray can as they're coming in, into contact with the wall. This is the same thing that's happening with your laser scanners in the field. So you might wonder, my laser scanner, my X330 is 2 to 5 millimeters accurate, which is what the rating is. 1 to 4 millimeters accurate with the S series. This is a 150, this is an X330. The 330 meter range or the 150 meter range, am I getting the 2 to 5 millimeter accuracy at the full range of 330 or 150? You're actually not. And what is the cutoff for that range? 70 to 80 feet. Now, if you ask Pharaoh a simple question of what is my accuracy at range? They said that the premium in the S series, the ranging error is one millimeter at 32 feet and 82 meters. The X330 ranging error is two millimeters at 32 feet and 82 feet. My question is, what is our left to right up and down accuracy of that scan data when it gets past 70 to 80 feet? You can measure a point from our scanner directly to our object that we're scanning. There's a measurement there. But what we're looking for when we're scanning objects isn't necessarily the measurement here, but the measurement all over the surface of the object. So the laser is coming out and getting coverage over the object that we're scanning. When you've got your scanner within the 70 to 80 feet with the correct settings, the points from the scanner are going to land on the surface of the object that you're scanning and they're going to land two to five millimeters apart, one to four millimeters apart. That's your accuracy. Once you get beyond this range, you're always going to be capturing something in the background. Is the data usable data in the background and it depends on what you define as usable data now if this building is say 700 feet from our scanner and the piece of equipment that we're scanning down here is let's just say that that is 40 feet. We've got a correct setting for our scanner. The points that land on the object that we're scanning are going to be two, three, four millimeters apart, giving us the accuracy we're looking for. But because our laser points are spreading as they come away from our scanner, when they make contact with something 700 feet away, because if our range is 330 meters, we're capturing data that far away. Is Pharaoh telling us that our accuracy in this range is from this point to the scanner? Or is it our left to right where the points have made contact with the building? This is what you need to remember. When we're looking at the points that are made that are making contact with 
our object that we're trying to capture this distance between the points that have made contact this is where our one to four milli millimeters accuracy for say our s-150 scanner comes into play as these points are spreading apart exactly like they did as the paint spreads apart from the paint the paint can when you're spraying it's spreading apart at a consistent rate and as it hits the surface of the building if it's spreading apart which we know it is where it's making contact cannot continue to be one two three millimeters from each other all the points are spreading apart as the scanner turns as the mirror spins you're throwing points continuously the slower that scanner turns the more points that you're going to be throwing at something any way you slice it as you get 700 feet away these points are now going to be further apart so the points out here on this building the left to right or the up to down they may be inches apart from each other I can't tell you how many inches but it could be two inches or three inches or even more so the data that's captured beyond the 70 to 80 feet is not data that you necessarily want to be modeling with now how does Faro compensate for this spread in laser scan points coming off of the scanner to try to give you the best possible coverage the most accuracy as far away as they possibly can that's where the being able to manipulate your scanner settings before you go out is going to make a difference now we're all familiar with setting the scanner up before we go out but what we're going to do is just explain why those settings are important so if you're going to I'm going to use the word outdoor setting here so when I say outdoor setting I mean that we're going to try to capture something as far away from the scanner as we can so whether you're in a large uh, open you know room um, or you're you're outside capturing you know the side of a building or something this is where we're going to stretch as far as we can so the outdoor setting inside the scanner most likely is going to be one four three x three x four x and I'll explain what these things mean so a one quarter setting is about 44 million points when I say points I mean that's the time that that's the the number of scan uh, points that are fired from the scanner during the time of the scan so that's seven and a half minutes or so you're gonna get 44 million points you can see that in the setting when you set it up like this and the 3x in case you didn't know what that part meant that is where the scanner is turning at a rate that you're really at this point gonna hit the same approximate spot three times so you're building accuracy here and then with this you're trying to build the number of points that are coming out of the scanner well let's compare that to what an indoor scan setting would be and then why there's a difference so our indoor or our close proximity that's if we're going to scan a room we don't need to have a ton of scan points because they're not going to be going very far from the scanner before they make contact so you could take this setting and scan inside of a room it's going to take much longer and it's really going to be way more points than what you need so an indoor or close proximity scan setting would be 1 8 3 X 1 8 is 11 million points now why 11 
for a short distance and 44 million points for a long distance. Well, again, we're going to draw our scanner. And then we're going to draw our two different objects. So we've got an object here, and then we've got an object here. Now, the distance that we're going to be doing this, this is all going to be within the 80 feet, right? So let's just say that this is 80 feet here. Let's say that this is going to be 30 feet. Now, what's going to happen when we scan with an indoor setting? We're very close to this object. And then as the points come out and they spread, we're going to have plenty of coverage on the wall. But to reach this 80 foot portion here, we're on our outdoor setting, 44 million points. The reason that Pharaoh does this is because they cannot stop the spread of these points. There isn't a way for them to say, oh, I, I just want to reach something further away by making sure the points stay closer together as they leave the scanner. It's not what's happening. What's happening with this particular scanner is they're just throwing more points. So now imagine a spray can, a spray paint with a small nozzle and you back up say three feet away from the wall and that you spray the the paint on the wall you're going to get let's just say pretty bad coverage now let's say that you've got a different nozzle on a spray can and you're able to release considerably more paint it's still going to be spreading apart but there's so much more it's like the difference between your household garden hose and a fire hose there's just so much more coming out that as it spreads it's still going to get good coverage even up at 80 feet so you're just firing more points that are staying close together so with that 80 foot mark you still have good data you still have your one to four millimeter and the close side here you've got one to four millimeter but once it gets beyond the 80 feet, adding more and more points becomes very difficult. And, you know, this is why when it comes to the Faro scanners, in general, with the settings that are most common, you're looking to get this data from the first 75 to 80 feet of your scan. So just keep in mind that while you're still picking up data, the data at the very end of the range the scanners can pick up. If this is at 330 meters, and you're you, using the X330, this data, you're still going to get an accurate reading this way. But again, it all depends on where those points are landing on the surface. If those points are this far apart, that data is not good for modeling for BIM, but maybe it's going to be good if you're trying to measure the volume inside of a cavern or a large facility where you can really only say pop one scan. That's a completely different function for the data. So anyway, I hope this makes sense. Keep in mind, using these scanners in the field, try to keep the scanner within 70 to 80 feet of whatever the surface is that you're trying to scan. If you're going to scan along the side of a building, then make sure that when you jump that scanner, keep in mind that that 80 foot range is where the good data is. So if you pick the scanner up and moved it, let's just say 80 feet, then you've got data that's been captured 80 feet and then 80 feet and there's now a ring of 40 feet where the two scan positions have now crossed over you're maintaining that great accuracy because you're overlapping the scans say every 40 feet
something to think about when you're in the field I hope it helps again my name is Nick I'm with Atlantic laser scanning it's AtlanticLaserScanning.com. If you've got any questions, you can email us at info at AtlanticLaserScanning.com. Thanks and good luck with your projects.